In this video, we're going to look at the Huntington Hill method of apportionment. And it is important to note that this is the current method that is used to apportion congressional seats by the United States. So with the Huntington Hill method, it's similar to the Jefferson method at first in that we our first steps are both to identify the modified divisor. But as before, finding the modified divisor is a very tedious and time-consuming process. So we will always be given the modified divisor. So you just need to identify where it's given in the problem. Next, as before, you would calculate the modified quota by taking the category's population and dividing it by the modified divisor. So for each category, you find the modified quota by dividing these two things in your calculator. And this is where it differs from the Jefferson method. In step three, we then have to round each category's modified quota using the Huntington Hill rounding scheme, which we'll talk about right now. So in the Jefferson method, you just round down automatically, but the Huntington Hill rounding scheme is a bit more complex. Let's look at this rounding scheme. So for the Huntington Hill rounding scheme, what you need to do, the steps are first, find A, the integer part of the modified quota. Now I'm gonna work through an example as we read this to just help make sense of it. So suppose for one category you found the modified quota to be 14.673. Then step one would tell us that we need to find A, which is the integer part of the modified quota. So looking at my modified quota, this is the integer part. So I would off to the side write, okay, A here is 14. That's the integer part of the modified quota. Step two tells us B is equal to A plus one. So whatever you found for A, so find A first, then find B. B is just that value plus one. So 14 plus one is 15. Okay, step three tells us to find the square root of A times B. So this is the square root of 14 times 15. And if you're typing this into your calculator, you would need to say the square root button. It, it might differ depending on your calculator, but for mine, I would press the square root button first, and then I would write parentheses 14 times 15, close parentheses and enter. And that would allow me to look at the square root of 14 times 15 which when rounded is 14.49138. And then this is the rounding scheme. Once we've found the square root of A times B, what we do is we would compare the modified quota versus this new square root of A times B. So we would say, take this value and this value and see which one is larger. And it says if the modified quota is larger than the square root of A times B, then round it up. But if the modified quota is smaller than what you just found, then round it down. So looking here, the value, the MQ is 14.673, whereas the square root of A times B that we found is 14.49. You would just compare them one at a time, 1144.6 1, versus four. So this is the larger number. So we are actually in this situation so our rounded MQ would be, we need a round up, so we would round up to 15. And you would need to do this for each MQ value that you find. You would need to find the MQ. Then separately, you would need to find the square root of A times B, where A is the integer part of the modified quota, B is one more than that. And then compare, if the modified quota is bigger, round the modified quota up. If the modified quota is smaller, round the modified quota down. Let's go through this example. It asks us to use the Huntington Hill method, so they've told us what method to use, to apportion 13 available club seats on the clubs based on the membership below. We're told to round to two decimal places if necessary, and we're asked to use the modified divisor of 6.4. This is a key thing that we need to know. And they've already provided the table written out for us. But remember, the table for these are always going to start with the category first, then the number of items or people in the category. And then for Huntington Hill, you would always have the MQ value next 
if you were writing out your own table, then you would have the square root of a times b next. Writing these side by side will help us know whether we need to round up or down, and then finally the rounded mq value. For the physics club, in both Jefferson and Huntington Hill method, to find the mq you would take the population, which for physics it was 29, divide that by the modified divisor given, use our calculator, and we would get five or 4.53125. We were asked to round to two decimal places when necessary. So we would say the mq value is 4.53. If you could take a moment, I'm going to pause the video. If you would pause it and find the mq value for biology and mathematics, unpause to check your work. So when you take the category, population divided by 6.4 for biology, we would get 4.84 when rounded. Taking the 22 people in the mathematics club, dividing by 6.4, we would get 3.44 when rounded. So all of this so far is the same as what we would do in Jefferson method. Here we get to the different part with Huntington Hill, because the Huntington Hill method has an important rounding scheme. You have to find this second category and then compare them to know how to round. So it says the square root of a times b. We know a is the integer part of the number. So looking here, 4.53, the 4 is the integer part. So I might write off to the side, a here is 4. b is always one more than that, so 5. So we're going to be looking at the square root of 4 times 5, which is the same as the square root of 20. We need to type this into our calculator, and we would find the square root of 20 is equal to 4.47213595. We were asked to round to two decimal places, so that would be 4.47. And before we worry about rounding this, let's just keep calculating the square roots of a and b. I like to fill in the table all the way down, and then we'll worry about doing the final part. So for finding the square root of a times b for our next step, we would look at the next number. A is always the integer part of the number, so 4.84, the integer part is again 4. B would then be one more than that, which is 5, and we need to look at the square root of 4 times 5, which as before is the square root of 20. We just calculated this. We know from before, or we could calculate again, it rounds to about 4.47 when rounded to two decimal places. So if you wouldn't mind, take a moment to pause the video and find the square root of a times b for the mathematics club. Unpause to check your work. So for the mathematics club, we see that it's 3.44 is the mq value. Now we take the integer part, which happens to be 3. That's a. b is one more than that, so that would be 4. So we need to look at the square root of 3 times 4, which is the same as the square root of 12. Typing this into our calculator, we would get the square root of 12 is 3.46410165. Now we need to round to two decimal places, so this would round to 3.46. And we found the mq values, we found the square root of ab values. Now let's uh, figure out how to round this based on the Huntington Hill method for rounding. So at the Huntington Hill method, you would compare the mq and the square root of a times b. If the mq is bigger, then it rounds up to the next integer. If mq is smaller than the square root of a times b, you round down to the previous integer. So comparing these two, 5 point, or 4.53 to 4.47, we would ask ourselves which is the bigger number. In this case, 4.53 is bigger than 4.47, so since the mq is bigger, we are going to round the mq value up to the next integer, so we would have the rounded mq value is 5. That's for physics. Now we're going to look at biology. So we are going to compare the mq value of 4.84 to its corresponding square root of a times b. 
the mq value is again bigger than the square root of a times b because 4.84 is larger than 4.47 so that means you round the mq value up to the next integer so this would round up to be the integer 5. Why don't you take a moment to pause the video now and compare the remaining mq and square root of a times b for that category. Unpause to check your work after you've rounded the mq value. Okay. Comparing for mathematics, the mq is 3.44, whereas the square root of a times b for that category is 3.46. 3.46 is slightly larger, so in this case, the square root of a is bigger than the mq, or this one is smaller. When mq is smaller, we round down, so we would round it to 3 instead. So this would say that we would give 3 of the club council seats of the 13 to the mathematics club, 5 of the club council seats of the 13 to the physics, and 5 to the biology. So we have rounded this using the Huntington Hill method. So when doing these problems, just make sure you carefully read to find the MD value, and then you carefully read to distinguish, are they asking you to do this with the Jefferson method or the Huntington Hill method? The main difference is these final two steps, both do you need to find the square root of A times B only in Huntington, and how do you round it? There's a different rounding scheme for Jefferson and Huntington Hill. Now just so we're aware of how this might look otherwise, we could have an example, particularly in some of our online quizzes, where most of the work, again, is already done for us. We just have to find one of the categories or a few of the categories that are left blank. So we're asked in this problem to use the Huntington Hill method to apportion the 13 available club seats based on the membership given below. We're asked to use MD is 6.4. I did just notice a typo here. This should be 3.4378. Okay, so correct this typo for the mathematics MQ if needed. That was just an uh, error that slipped through when I was typing it. So this should be the MQ value for mathematics. And as we look at this table, we see that most of the work, all the work is done for physics. All the MQ value, square root of A times B, the round of value has already been done. All the work has been done for biology. The only difference here is we see that the square root of a times b is missing for mathematics club. So we would need to find the square root of a times b and that's the only work that needs to be done here. There's only one blank. So we would look, how do you find the square root of a times b for mathematics? First you need to look at the value of mq and remember that a is the integer portion of that. So since the mq value is 3.4375, we would say for this uh, category, A would be 3, that means B is one more than that, or 4, so the square root of 3 times 4 is equal to the square root of 12, which would be 3.46410165. Everything looks to be three decimal places rounded, so let's just round this one to three decimal places. 3.464. So this is just a quick introduction just to show how some of the work might look on a quiz if it was online to find these values. Since a lot of it is making a table, that's hard to assess doing all of the work. So what's going to happen is a lot of times you might be given a lot of the work already done. But notice here in this problem, we've got two question marks, a single question mark for the MQ of clinic C, a double question mark for the rounded MQ. You've been given the MD value, you've been told to use Jefferson, and you see that there are two blanks for you to type in these correct values. So you're going through the exact same process, except a lot of the work's already been done. You just have to find, based on all the information given, since we're using Jefferson's method here, what is the MQ value for clinic C. Then based on Jefferson's rounding method, you would find the rounded MQ value and you would type these here. Or for the Huntington Hill method, we're told to use the Huntington Hill method in this problem. It gives us an MD value and notice all the work for physics and all the work for mathematics has been done. You just have to find these three answers, which the first one with a single question mark is the MQ for biology. 
The second one with two question marks is the square root of a times b for the corresponding biology. And then the three question marks is the rounded MQ for biology. And here you would need to find these in order. Remember, you've got to find MQ first. That's how you know what the square root of a times b would be. And then based on these two for Huntington Hill, that's how you round it. And then once you finish this work, you would type in your numerical answers here. So this is just a little review to give you some familiarity with how this might look like in our online quizzes. If you have questions about this or anything in the material, feel free to give me a Canvas message and I'll be happy to help you.